Hey everyone, welcome to the show. So I have a bunch of interesting updates to share about Donald Trump's attempted coup clowns. Um, first is news about former Trump trade advisor, Peter Navarro. I shared recently Navarro made one last ditch attempt to try to get his contempt of Congress case tossed. Um, it was going to trial this week. Last week, he threw this Hail Mary pass and the judge considered Navarro's executive privilege argument, and he said, no, that's that's not going to cut it, primarily because Navarro has no written evidence to show that Trump ever asserted executive privilege over his conversations and communications with Navarro. And Trump is no longer the executive, right? I mean, it's Joe Biden is the executive now, and he's the only one who can exert uh, or, or assert executive privilege. And this just goes to show you how Trump throws his people to the wolves, right? I mean, Navarro is facing prison time and Trump is like, no, nope, yeah, not going to help you out with this. So Navarro's trial began yesterday, Tuesday, with jury selection. And because of the judge's decision on that matter, he's barred from even trying to use it as an excuse with the jury. So essentially, he has no defense at this point. And the prosecutor has pretty much a slam dunk case. Um, they can even use his own words against him. I mean, clearly he was subpoenaed. He just refused to show up. He refused to turn anything over. As you all know, he's made very foolish media appearances. Um, and then in court, he filed a lawsuit at one point against Nancy Pelosi for you know the January 6th Select Committee. And Navarro admitted in that court filing that he, quote, failed to comply with what I believed their unlawful subpoena. I had and have no other honorable choice than to fail to comply with the committee's subpoena. So he admitted that this was his choice. He didn't say, oh, Donald Trump ex is asserted executive privilege and that's why I'm doing it. He said, I know I just decided in my own warped mind that this subpoena is illegitimate, so I'm not going to show up. That's not a legal defense. So Navarro is freaking out. Um, as I said, he's facing up to two years in prison if he's convicted. More than likely, it's going to be what Steve Bannon got. I think he got like four months for the same charge. And he actually went on Steve Bannon's show recently. And he said this trial could end up costing him around 1.7 million total in legal fees. Now, as of this afternoon, I checked and Navarro's legal defense fundraising page on Give, Send, Go had raised just under $450,000. So looks like he's gonna have to put some cash of his own into this. Um, another one of Trump's coup clowns facing astronomical legal fees, as you all know, is attorney Rudy Giuliani. And former financial backers say they're absolutely done with him. Billionaire Leon Cooperman, he financially supported Giuliani's presidential campaign in 2008, but he told CNBC, quote, I wouldn't give him a nickel. I'm very negative on Donald Trump. It's an American tragedy. Rudy was Ameri America's mayor. He did a great job. And like everybody else who gets involved with Trump, it turns to shit. <laughs> then former NASCAR executive Brian France, or France, excuse me, said, quote, I was a major supporter of Rudy in 2008 and at other times. I'm not sure what happened, but I miss the old Rudy. I'm wishing him well. Um, yet another of Trump's coup clowns facing financial collapse is Mike Lindell. Lindell also went on Bannon's podcast recently. He said his employees are really concerned about the company. He said that he tried to obtain a personal loan and he admitted that the lender backed out of the last minute and said, quote, or he says, quote, because they deemed it political. And then Lindell complained, quote, because why? Because I want to secure elections in our country. Yeah, that's why. Um, and then Lindell took part in a fundraiser recently. You may have heard about this. It was a fundraiser for the 16 fake electors that have been charged in Michigan. And he continued to complain about all of these legal woes and financial woes. He told the audience, quote, 
I've had to borrow millions of dollars this summer. I've never been in debt like this for a long, long time. And then Lindell added, quote, when they weaponize the government against us, it seems like it's insurmountable. And these people that don't have the resources, like you say that I had, I don't have any more, but I had. Yeah, so really bad news for Mike Lindell. You know, I think he truly is a believer. I, I really do. I, I think that some of them are smart enough to know better. I don't think that he is. I think he really, truly, honestly believes that the election was stolen falsely. Um, and I, he's been all in. And this is where it's going to land him. It, penniless and out on the street. In other news, uh, Trump co-defendant Sean Still, he might also need to find another line of work, although I, I wouldn't count on it. Here's what's going on with him. Still is one of the named defendants in the Georgia indictment. He's facing seven criminal criminal counts. Um, he's also facing that violation of the RICO Act. He's also a Georgia se state senator. He's a sitting senator right now as we speak. Well, on Friday of last week, the Georgia governor, Brian Kemp, he issued an executive order and he appointed a three-member commission to review the case against Still and to determine if he should be suspended from office. Now, Kemp wrote in his executive order, quote, the review commission shall determine if the indictment relates to and adversely affects the administration of the member's office and whether the rights and interests of the public are adversely affected. Um, so the commission now has 14 days to make a determination about Still's position. Don't get too excited, though, because Kemp puts some real ringers on the commission. One of the three members is Senate Majority Leader Steve Gooch. He is also a Republican. And Gooch had recently told the Atlanta Journal-Constitution that the district attorney overseeing this case is, quote, tainted and that she's, quote, politicizing this, and we want to make sure these people get a fair trial and a fair shake. So you can see what team he's playing for. Um, in other coup clown news, Harrison Floyd is finally out on bail. Floyd is the former military veteran I mentioned before. He's the co-founder of Black Voices for Trump, and he was allegedly involved in that pressure campaign against election worker Ruby Freeman. Well, as I mentioned before, funds were raised for him, him online. Um, they helped him cover the costs of his bond and of his attorney's fees. And Floyd, who is supposedly a supporter of the party of personal responsibility, he's now saying that he's been targeted in this Georgia case because he's a black Trump supporter. Floyd said, quote, part of black culture is always voting Democrat. I went against the code, if you will, at the highest order. And so the district attorney decided to send me what we call a Negro wake up call. I will remind you that there are 19 defendants in that Georgia case and Floyd is only one of two black defendants. So, you know, what is his excuse for why the other 17 were indicted? I love how Republicans, they always claim, oh, the left uses identity politics. They use it as a shield. Yet the right whips out the race card. They whip out the sexism card as soon as they get caught with their hand in the cookie jar. Anyway, next up is news about Kraken Lady, uh, the leopard print lady, Sydney Powell. Powell is trying to pause the multi-billion dollar Smartmatic and Dominion cases against her due to the Georgia indictment and her upcoming trial for that case. Her recent court filing has asked for a 90-day stay in the Smartmatic case, and then it says that she's currently in talks with Dominion requesting that they do the same. Um, Powell is arguing that since her Georgia trial will take place in the latter half of October, she's gonna have to defend herself in the Smartmatic lawsuit and this trial at the same time, and it could affect some of her decisions, like whether or not to take, take the fifth to avoid um, self-incrimination. So we'll see what happens with that. There was also a great article in the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, uh, it was also regarding Powell, and why her defense in the Georgia case isn't likely to work. 
Powell claims she had no part in the breach of the election equipment in Coffee County, Georgia. That's one of the main allegations against her. But there's an abundance of written evidence showing her direct involvement in the crime. So first, Powell's nonprofit organization, it's called Defending the Republic. That organization, which was started by her, she runs the whole thing, they paid computer analysts from Sullivan Strickler to copy the data on the Coffee County election equipment. And Sullivan Strickler was communicating with her via email, like directly. The breach of the equipment took place on January 7th of 2021, the day after the Capitol attack. On January 8th, Sullivan Strickler emailed Powell and they wrote, quote, everything went smoothly yesterday with the Coffee County collection. Everyone involved was extremely helpful. We are consolidating all of the data at collected and will be uploading it to our secure site for access by your team. Hopefully we can take care of payment today. <laughs> now there was no response, there was no record of a reply from Powell, but Sullivan Strickler sent her an invoice for $26,000 and they were paid. <laughs> so kind of hard to make the case oh i had nothing to do with it but you know they're checking in with me and giving me a whole rundown on how it went <laughs> and i didn't respond and say what are you talking about i don't know anything about this <laughs> so powell had also according to an email that she sent in december of 2020 she authorized payment to sullivan strickler to copy election data in the state of michigan so Powell's attorney is now trying to throw her co-defendants under the Trump train. They're saying, you know, that they're the ones that gave the permission and allowed Sullivan Strickler into the election office. <laughs> so they're all going to be trying to eat each other like wolves. Um, last but not least is attorney Kenneth Cheesebro. His attorney filed a court document. They're desperately trying to distance Cheeseboro from Sidney Powell. They're asking that his case is severed from hers. And I can't imagine that the judge is gonna allow that to happen. I mean, Cheeseboro, Powell, um, John Eastman, they all want to have a, a quick trial. I can't imagine that this judge is going to say, OK, yeah, let's just do separate trials for each and every one of you when we can do all three of you together. Right. I mean, they're all pieces of the same conspiracy puzzle. So we'll see how it goes. I don't know. I could be wrong, but I just doubt it. <laughs> um, anyway, guys, I will let you know when I hear more. Thank you all so much for watching and listening. Please like, share, and subscribe. Please donate if possible. Links are below in the description box. Love you all. Take care. I'll talk with you soon.